Hey, hey, Miles. Hi. I'm just back from the mountain, and I got to see the game right from the Continental Breakfast Room in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. So, uh, live from uh, Colorado, it's uh, Denver Broncos Mile High View. No commercials, no bullshit. Looks like the Broncos eked out a uh, another another victory, barely. Um, so we and you haven't had a chance to even talk. I've been up in the mountains, and uh, I'm sure we both had uh, a lot to say. I have plenty to say, but uh, as always, I yield the floor to you to start out. Um, what did we say about running the football? What did we say about don't get pass happy? Exactly. Don't get pass happy. Exactly. And uh, I just want to say this. I, I was saying this during the game. You can clearly see the difference between John Elway players and Vic Fangio players. And what I mean by that is the Blake Bortles of the world, the Melvin Gordons of the world. And you have a... <laughs> yep. Yeah, do you need a little more Melvin? Hey, why don't we trash talk Philip Lindsay some more? Because that we get paid to do that. And we're both just shaking our heads. I was. Do people see what we're talking about now? He fits the scheme better than Gordon does. Well, the fact is, Gordon is, you know, the Chargers knew to walk He's away from idiot. him. Idiot. Chargers knew to walk away from him. Elway, no, doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. He just doesn't get it. He never will. And uh, Philip Lindsay. Oh, go ahead. No, you want to continue with Philip Lindsay? Go ahead. Uh, Philip Lindsay is an absolute. He, Philip Lindsay is a, one of those players where he puts his heart on his sleeve, and what I mean by that is, he he smelt blood in the water when Gordon did this crap, and he's like, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to remind you who Philip Lindsay is, and he came out, and the one thing I love about Phil Lindsay is. He sets up his offensive linemen. Gordon doesn't do that. You can clearly see that. He's patient with his running. Gordon isn't. That's well, the difference. Well, I said from the very beginning, Lindsey was the better runner. I didn't understand the pickup. It made absolutely no sense. It was almost like, in my opinion, a lot like Josh McDaniels going after uh, Tim Tebow. It, that, it, it almost seemed smack of that. Where why do why do we need to do that? Why did we need to bring uh, Philip Lindsay? Or why did we have to bring jo uh, Melvin Gordon in? Why? Yep. And where I, where has he is he made a difference? Yeah. Um. I actually saw a running black a running back block finally. That was Royce Freeman. Uh, you know I I'm not a big Royce Re Royce Freeman fan, but I still saw a block. Well, you can, that's the least we should ask of them, to block. Exactly. You know, that's the least. And, you know, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to – this is what I need to say right off the bat before we get going too far. I, I'm, first, I want to look at the big, big picture here. This game, uh, the big picture is the, the coach that everybody wants to get rid of. His defense had to bail out Shermer's inept offense. Okay. <laughs> That, that's the big picture here. The guy right. that everybody wants to get rid of, it wasn't for him. It wasn't for him. You, they would have probably lost that game again. So, anyway, that, that's the big picture. Uh, and then I, I'm, I'm going to get into offensive line. I'm going to get into uh, Drew Locke, the good, bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. uh, get into the offensive scheming. Offensive, I may have said offensive line, <clears throat> running game, defenders. Uh, we The Broncos obviously caught um, New England at the right time. There's no doubt about that. Yep. They were definitely unprepared. Yep. Uh, I think the two weeks that we had to prepare for this game certainly show with the timing, the rhythm on both sides of the football today. I think New England was... Well, they're, they're injured. We're injured, too. But I don't think they were as prepared. They were not the prepared. Scans. No, no you can clearly see that. Prepared. Oh, yep. and Cam Newton looked like Cam Newton of old. 
you know, looking around. Caught him on that a few times. And Cam Newton, 0-4 against the Broncos, baby. So I'm not going to get too crazy about this game because Pat Shermer almost blew the game for us with his past happy offense at the end of the game. At the end of the game, we didn't get that. Did not yeah. understand yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't Philip Lindsay dictating to the offense, both offenses. Or I'm sorry. Let me take that back. Philip Lindsay was dictating to their defense and our offense. Okay. Setting the tone, when to throw the ball, you know, when, to, you know, setting up the pass. Yep. There was no reason to just keep. Now, I want to, I want to say something about Drew Locke real quick. Okay. Okay. There was a reason I didn't want to bring him in, but I'll bring that up later. Okay. Now, I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, okay? Now, the thing is, is the uh, there was a pick at the end of the first half, but there was miscommunication. I don't know whether Locke screwed that up or whether the receiver, somebody, one of the two screwed Locke did. Locke okay. did. Well, I don't know. I don't know if the receiver wasn't supposed to run a diff run the route the way he thought the route was supposed to be ran. Okay, but this also I want to say that this is a guy that needs reps. He needs reps. Okay. So I'm not trying to throw the baby out with the bathwater with what I'm trying to say. The guy needs reps. Shermer needs to be the same lesson that Mike Shanahan had and I learned. Use your run they 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 start off running they start off doing what they needed to do. Okay. My what problem are you talking about? My problem with, with – well, too, I want to bring this up, too. Drew Locke had two touchdown passes dropped on him, okay? He had two touchdowns. So I, I got I, you know, that may have made a difference on, on down the road how this game turned out. Mm -hmm. Had that uh, – had number 85-0 didn't drop two catchable. That was – and Locke hit him just right on those. That was inexcusable on the receiver's part. New receiver, haven't been in the ribbon. Again, I go back to the team needs reps. The team needs reps. The team needs reps. <clears throat> what I am upset about with Locke is that uh, I would like to see more pocket awareness, okay? But the thing is, is why, what I didn't want him to come in was what I saw at the very end where he starts, throw, he starts throwing into to, to heavy coverage. And I saw that in college. He, you know, when he played – Tougher opponents, he would throw into heavy coverage. Mm -hmm. You know, you you have an arm, but you got to have a brain too. You know, you you got to know when to throw those those balls. But overall, you know, it's a mixed bag. It's you know, had that though that receiver caught the two touchdown passes, this, that could have been a completely different game. And now we're not in this panic mode. This also, I did not like the route running in the first half by the by Shermer going vertical with those with those safeties, those corners. I didn't like that. I said, yep. let's do more across, across stuff, get your tight end involved. Should have should have, and I don't blame them for trying, you know. Yep. You, you gotta try. But you know, they they locked down Kansas City when they were doing that, you know. Test it once. You should go right to other route, you know, higher percentage routes, you know, something that you can get more completions with. So I felt that, that you know, well, it just seems like they need more reps. They obviously yep. need more reps. They had plenty of time to prepare. They were obviously the more prepared team. Mm -hmm. But um, they, uh, the team, uh, Locke needs more reps. He needs to settle down, too. I do like the fact he wants to go down the field. You know, he does want to do that, but you got to be careful too. You can't, you can't get too uh, gamble happy down there. Um, I'm going to touch up the point about the offense here. Um, I didn't like the way Pat Schirmer called the end of the game. Um, no. I agree with you with the route running. That's the one criticism I have about Pat Shermer. I think the offensive line did a lot better today um, with yes, their pass protection. Thank you, offensive uh, line, for actually doing your job. But Pat Shermer, thanks for helping them out by actually getting the running backs at least the block, tight ends into the blocking scheme, and you're not just bringing in, you know, a faucet of players just coming at you. Yeah. Um, the thing about Drew Locke is, like I've been telling everybody, he has a talent. You saw the flashes in this game. 
the what the thing I really want him to be consistent is those consistent plays need to be more of a trend than just a whiff. And what I mean by that is you saw the throws that he made. That beautiful third down play to Tim Patrick, that's the Drew Lock I knew from college. I agree with you with the double coverage thing. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be one of those guys where I'm like, oh, Drew Lock is the next John. I'm not gonna be that. He does have weaknesses that he needs to clean up. But the one thing I do like about Drew Locke is I believe in in my heart and what I believe from what I see from him, he will get that cleaned up. He just needs to play more. He just yeah, needs they to have definitely time. need more reps. Yes. Yep. And the one criticism I do have about Drew Locke is he's still looking on one side of the field. And what I mean by that is he's not he's not uh, doing his reads correctly. He's not going okay. He's not open. He's not quickly. He needs to be quick, 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 quick. But that's, I believe that's going to come over time. Um, this offensive line, I'm going to go back to it. I, uh, DeMar Dotson, that guy's no joke. I wanted him to start week one. Uh, after, after this game, I think that he, he has been a revelation for the right side of the line. Graham Glasgow, thank you very much. Thank you for not getting pushed back on a constant basis like you have been the past two, three weeks. Thank you. Lloyd Cushenberry, I'm telling you, Lloyd Cushenberry is going to be, he's going to be a very good center. Um, but yeah, I, I think overall, Tim Patrick, this is a guy people need to watch out for. And people need to, people need to keep, people need to, especially defenses, this guy's no joke. I'm a big Tim Patrick fan. No, I yeah, been. yeah, Tim Patrick's definitely stepped up. He's definitely stepped up. Uh he was having some catch issues in the beginning. Uh, For sure. Yeah. And he has stepped up, so that's good to see. We need to get uh, – well, what about um, – who's uh, – God, um, who's that third string, now third string re receiver that – Based on Hamilton. Hamilton. Yes. That really? Was, God, that, that was, was a fun Elway. It's a great draft. We got Hamilton. It's a great draft. I have a bone yeah. to pick with that. Yeah, now, I will say this. The defender, Gilbert, did do a really good job at that pass by. You, if you're good, you just put your hand. You know, you don't even have to, but you put that hand in that. You can see them, and you're actually blinding them. A good good DB. Now, what our DBs would do, they would turn around. How many DBs don't even do that? Know exactly right when to turn around. Yeah. But Gilbert, he put his hand right, right in the guy's yeah. eyes. Yeah. That's what you do, and I because they looked at that angle, and I he just like, and that's all you know. The 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 marquee receivers still will catch that. Yep. You know I can't say that you know Hamilton's not a marquee, but you know no. probably you know what maybe if we consider him as a backup, I can be I can live with him as a backup. Yep. You know, but no way is he starting material. No, I think next year. I think it'll be Sutton, Judy, and Tim Patrick is your three. Oh, that, that yeah, that has to be it. That has yeah. to be it. But we're gonna talk about this game. I don't want to go off topic, but uh, we're, we we can go to the defense. I I am uh, I I I want to tell all the Vic Fangio haters out there. This is what I'm talking about. Vic Fangio knows what he's doing. Yes, yeah. He definitely knows what he's doing. He he picks up people players' tendencies. And finally, the defensive line got some push up the middle. I know yeah. it wasn't the great offensive line because they had a bunch of injuries. But thank you. Thank you. See what happens when you pass rush up the middle? It helps out the whole defense. They still need defensive players. For sure. Yeah. And this is, you know, that's a really good point. This team isn't really player heavy with the defense, but they're keeping teams like Pittsburgh – Tampa, they're keeping them all in check. That's the that's the big picture that that yeah. I think a lot of Bronco fans are. He's doing a lot with very little to work with. That's you know? the mark. That's a mark of a really good head coach. That's a mark of a really. Me good and you coach. believe that he's got very few. To, to, I know that they they think they got the 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 top shelf defenders. They you don't go around the league and see what top shelf defenders really are. Yeah. They're not. You know it. You know, if they had a couple of key players on defense, they definitely would go up a notch, you know, from, from where they're at now. Well, uh, linebacking in front, front, uh, the front lines. I have a bone to pick. 
Alexander Johnson again. I t- I am getting sick of Alexander Johnson, and the reason I say that is that guy cannot tackle worth a dang. Another oh, armed yeah. missed tackle. Yes. Another. Oh, and oh, he's a good coverage linebacker. Did you see it? They, they they took the running back out on swing pass, juked him out, got him inside. That's what I'm talking about. Drew Alexander Johnson is a good backup. We'll we'll maybe showcase some of that. I'll uh, go through some of the Patriot highlights and show where he gets he gets thrown. And uh, Bryce Callahan, our corners played excellent today. Our corners played really excellent. Excellent, Bryce Callahan. That I. I'm not. I wasn't huge on the pickup, but Bryce Callahan looks like he's pay, looks like he's paid off. I, he's come back so far. He's so come far. back. The yep. old Bryce Callahan from Chicago. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Ojemudia. That guy. I'm telling you, watch out for Michael Ojemudia. That guy. He. He. The one thing I like about Michael Ojemudia, he's not scared to get in there and be. He's not scared to tackle. And that's well, what I love about involved. Michael Ojemudia. He's getting involved. I have to see how his progression goes. Um, yeah, Boye. <laughs> he's taking over Boye. You know, so, uh, yeah. I think the safeties had a really good game. Kareem Jackson had an excellent game. Still some whiffs, but Kareem Jackson and Justin Simmons had okay games. Hey, um, you think you can get rid of Boye then, take that money and put it elsewhere? Yes. Okay, so I guess we're, that, that kind of addresses where you think that uh, – Oh, is at. Yep. And uh, what was your take on uh, special teams today? Because I know that oh, we don't really Tyree talk about Cleveland. <laughs> Tyree Cleveland finally picked it up a little bit. I guess he got uh, the word that, you know, that horrible. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to hit the punter. <clears throat> they must. They had given him a hard time about that. It was awful. Yeah. So he did make a key tackle on the first. I think it was the first kickoff. Yeah, they, they ran it out. And he made a key tackle. I said, "You better get your act together, buddy, because you're like this close." Yeah, I. So the bigger picture I would take away is Pat Shermer. Uh, like, okay, I. It's just it's really hard to get a key on Pat Shermer because there's there's moments in a game where you're like, okay, he knows what he's doing, and then there's uh, then there's. You know, like at the end of the game where he's trying to be too cute. And I'm just like, dude, you can't do that, especially when you're going to go against Kansas City next week. You can't do that. No. <laughs> no, no they, got, they got the Jets and they got the Patriots all at the right time. Exactly. No, don't they play? Uh, they play Kansas City next week. It's next week. It's not San Diego. No. Chargers. Nope. Okay. Well, okay, so easy streets over with then. I just, I, I like, I like, there's like, like, like I've said before. And that's in Kansas City? I think I so. Yeah. Because they're I, in Buffalo. They're playing now. They're in Buffalo. Play mo- Monday. Or Monday. Yep. I, uh, like I said, I, it's, it's really hard to distinguish whether Rich Gangarillo or, uh, Pat Shermer because I, I, till this day, like I've said, I Rick Scangarillo, like there's there was a lot that made me mad. But the one thing I liked about him was he could plug up the A and B gaps like you've said constantly. And I, I think that he catered to Drew Locke's uh Drew Locke's strengths more than Pat Shermer does. And I think that's one of the things where I'm kinda getting frustrated is with Drew Locke, he is more comfortable when he's playing out in a shotgun. He's not comfortable playing you know, uh, under center. Yeah, that's what Drew Lock is more comfortable playing in the shotgun. So I, I just, I like what Pat Shimmer did today in the first half because he kept running the football. He realized what me and you said last week. You need to run the football against this team. Yeah, because they have really good corners. So it's just a matter of Pat Shimmer. You need to become more consistent. You can't be. You can't be this. You can't do that, especially when you're going to go against the good teams like Kansas City coming up and these these other good teams. Well, you can't I learned do that. I learned a lot about the Patriots in this game too, because normally this would be a game they would throw the ball a lot on. 
Uh, but uh, they were not prepared at all to do that. No. Now they're and they had to play a team that was better, one of the better teams against the run that they've seen. Yep. But they were absolutely not ready. So the Broncos caught, you know, two breaks, one with the Jets and then now with the Patriots. Uh, so like you said, I guess Kansas City you said is next. So this is, you know, there's going to be no no excuses, you know, unless there's outbreaks and shutdowns and, you know, under a normal, if it goes through normally, it there should be no excuses. I mean, Locke's got a game under his belt, the, the line, the makeshift or whatever. It has a game. Uh, Lindsay, what about this wash, this wash we call Gordon? You know, Get what, rid of him. Yeah, Get what, rid of him. And that money, you know. And you know what? I feel that there should be league-wide that the NFL has a team has the option <clears throat> to say, we're not paying you anymore. You're done. You got a DUI convicted. You're done. We're not paying you anymore. You know, he, we're you're done. We we can a, we can tear tear your contract up. He's the quarterback version of Chad Kelly. I'm like, come on, people. When are you going to realize that Melvin Gordon isn't it? I said it from the very beginning when that new the news broke. I said this is not going to work because Phil Lindsay he fits this offense better than Gordon does. You well, can see not, it. It's not sold on that. I'm just not sold on the fact that. He can't you know, pass block. Well, obviously he can't. Obviously he can't. It, it, and no matter what sports talk radio, if sports talk radio shows me him blocking footage of that here in Denver, I don't care what he did with the Chargers. Show me his pass blocking here in Denver. I've been looking for it. Can't find it. You paid a lot of money for this guy to be a receiver, too. Oh, can't catch. Can't catch. Or he's, yeah, he's not very good at catching. Uh, you know, so... You know, you know what I think too. I think that the be, the more Philip Lindsay does does well, the more it irritates John Elway. That's oh, why he got to get Lindsay. rid of it. That's why he's got Elway's got to go. You know, okay. you, you can't get irritated by a guy you didn't want playing well and showing the guy that oh, I'll put this guy for now. Let's see what you can do. And the guy goes out and gets a DUI, fumbles the first game away. Been largely a disappointment. Philip Lindsay is just like where he, you know, it's like you got to be brain dead if you think that you're going to sit there and bad mouth what Philip Lindsay does, what he brings to the table. You're you're brain dead. Dude, Philip Lindsay is one of those players, and this is why people. Oh, John, oh, he loves Philip Lindsay. No, he doesn't, because I guarantee you, Phil Lindsay doesn't take his his crap. Well, yeah, but he Phil Lindsay shows it on the field. Oh, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Dude, that Phil Lindsay is one of those prototypical running backs now. He's like your prototypical Christian McCaffrey, not to the level of Christian McCaffrey, but he's that prototypical running back. And you're gonna go sign a running back, top ten in money, who gets a DUI, and oh, oh, and it, just the sheer fact that they just didn't suspend him right away is just a, is just a colossal, just a big old cluster F. Big old clusterfuck, because I am sick of this crap. My my wife knows as much about the Broncos as plant life at the bottom of the Indian Ocean, and uh, she said to me, she said, John Elway, hasn't he screwed the team up a lot? <laughs> Somebody that's not even paying attention can figure it out. And and I want to say this, shout out to Brandon McManus. That guy... I, uh, our I, offense? Oh, yo! Shout out to our offense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We can't get in the end zone for some reason. I, well, see, yeah, two that's drop another passes. criticism. You had two drop passes in the end zone, uh, both by number eighty-five. Well, Pat Shermer, you can't come up with a, a play or something to get in the end zone. Like, come on, seriously, this is ridiculous. Yeah, like, yeah. this is this is this is a Vic Fangio win by all counts. This yeah. is a Vic Fangio win. Yes. He called his players out, and we got to see the the Vic Fangio players versus the John Elway players. This is what I this is what I've been saying. You can clearly see it. You saw it in this game. The likes of Bryce Callahan, the likes of Phil Lindsay, the likes of uh, Tim Patrick, the likes of all you know all the defensive players that were out playing their asses off. 
the guys they brought off the street, like Sylvester Williams, all these, the the Sean Williams, Shelby Harris, you know, like those type of players. I, I'm critical of Shelby Harris, but he had a heck of a game today. I can't, I can't take away what he did. Yeah, but you could clearly see it, and I'm sick of this whole. Oh, they're missing Jarrell Casey. He wasn't. He wasn't doing anything. Yeah, there. No, no, Jarrell. We have already talked. This is we've yeah. discussed it. We've yep. been there. This proves another one of John Elway's moves to bring a guy in that was uh, is made zero impact. Made zero impact on the team. And, and uh, at mid mid season, I'm going to go and see how that Arizona, how the Arizona uh, defensive player that I wanted to pick up uh, is doing. Was. Yeah. See how many sacks he's got, how many hurries he's got compared to is he is he still is he hurt or is he still playing? You know, he's still playing. Of course he is. He's not a this wasn't a he, that's not a job. Matter of fact, you know who picked him up, don't you? Vance Joseph. Vance Joseph. Vance Joseph is, knows more than Elway. You know, it's it's, it's unbelievable. Like like you so you watched the game, didn't you clearly see? What Vic Fangio, what his players look like, and then you have the John Elway players that just stink up the joint in this game. Well, you know what somebody will say to you, Mr. Drew Locke fan? He'll say that Drew Locke is a Elway pickup, too. Yeah. <laughs> They'll get on you for that. And I'll say to that, like, uh, like I, I get it, you know. But I, I was high on Drew Locke even before John Elway started looking at him. I was I'm wondering when John Elway's going to give up on Locke, though. How soon? I mean, he couldn't give up on Portals. Lynch, no, just the, for anything. Dude, like, I, like, Drew Locke, I'm going to go back to him. You could clearly see when he has time in the pocket and he's able to survey, you, you saw the flashes of that arm. You saw the flashes of the accuracy. The problem that he has is he's too inconsistent. But that's because he hasn't played a lot. Once he gets in the rhythm of the game, rhythm and practice. Yeah, he, yes. Gets, he, we haven't given him that. No. We that's all he got injured, you know, just because like, Schumer, couldn't, Schumer couldn't figure out how to stop defenders, you know, for how many weeks until the Jets game. You know, even that was a struggle for them. This was the first, you know, I got, I'm really curious, too, to see how the op- offensive line does. Uh, yeah. You know, during the Kansas City on that that defensive line. Yeah, because they have Chris Jones, one of the best defensive tackles in football. They have Frank Clark, who abuses Garrett Bowles on a on a weekly basis when they play every two the two times that they play. So I'm gonna be very curious to see what they do. But I'm like I said, I, I, I was listening to sports talk radio before we came on and they're saying, oh, Drew Locke had a terrible game. Drew Locke this. They're not even blaming Pat Shimmer for the dumbest calls I've ever seen at the end well, of the game. Well, did they mention that he had two touchdown passes that were dropped? Did no. They that? No. See, this is the this is why I'm saying I'm giving a quality product here. Exactly. I'm I'm saying, okay, I'm not gonna let Drew Locke off the hook on that last no last interception. You blamed him for the first interception. I'm not hundred percent sure. I can't say that it wasn't Patrick. Or him. I don't know. Okay. I honestly don't know. That could have went Fine. either way. But the fact he had two touchdowns dropped on him in the end zone could have completely changed this game. He should have had three if Hamilton caught that ball. Well, they would have got down there, but they struggled down there. I, I'm just saying, like, if that was a little bit further and he was able to get that, and if that defender, if, if he was a little bit, if he, well, that, that was, was he was, he could have caught that. If that he was KJ Hamler, that was a catchable ball. He would have been down there, but that was a that would have been he would have been down what at the ten around yeah. the ten yard line, but that was certainly a catchable ball. But I'll give Gilbert credit because he did what a you know and he put the the hand right up into the eyes, you know. Yeah, that's what you do. That's that's what a, a real defender does. And and I, I want to talk about the end of the game when they were starting to stop the run a little bit. That's what I'm talking about. Pat Shermer got too pass happy. Because they said, oh, they're starting to stop the run. We got to pass the – we got to pass. We got to pass. We got to pass. Well, they weren't stopping the run. They, no, and, they and, weren't. They stopped them a few times. Yeah, and, and that's just it. So, you know, you don't – and the, the vertical really wasn't – they were the, – give New England credit on their secondary. 
they were taking the vertical game away. They did it to Kansas City. Shermer, yeah. you know, this is the same gripe I had back with the, the playoff game, the uh, AFC champion with Pittsburgh in 2007. And Shanahan didn't understand. He didn't get it in his head that the Indianapolis Colts under Peyton Manning couldn't go vertical, couldn't connect. But they didn't even try running the football. The Indian, And we had right off the bat, they, they give him the ball, no problem. And that that would open up just the right pass plays, this, the amount that you needed. So don't go play in the vertical game. Do like you had before. Run the cross routes, you know, uh, this kind of thing, posts, this kind of thing. Yes. Don't, uh, yeah, don't go on the vertical game. And they needed to take time off the clock anyway. And this is the biggest thing I get with t- – what happens is the Broncos needed to score a touchdown. It had nothing to do with the clock. Everybody goes, look, how much time there's on the clock. Oh, my God, they, they got to run out the clock, the clock, the clock, the clock. I'm like, the clock won't mean anything if they're concentrating on scoring a touchdown. Forget the clock. Forget the clock. Just concentrate on scoring a, a touchdown. You do that, you put the heart, the dagger right into the heart. There's nothing they can do. You don't have to get down there fast. You can, you can take time off the clock and score a touchdown. And that's what they were doing in the first half. Yes. They were trying to anyway, yes. but they couldn't get in the end zone. Yeah. You saw the you saw when they came back at halftime the score sheet 14 plays 80 some yards four, 12 plays 60 some yards they were trying that but then you go in the second half oh we're going to run it okay they started off the second half great and then fourth quarter hits Pat Shermer gets his tails between his legs and then he's like oh 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 I got to pass I, I got to I got to there was only a few times where I saw where Tim Patrick was getting open on the vertical no one else was, but Tim Patrick, and you did it. You succeeded at it. That was rare. That yeah, there was were. Rare. Yeah, there were a lot better plays where they could get a step on the receiver and hit him. You know, the offensive line was given lock plenty of time. It was so so design the plays. I know. Now go vertical. Well, they they that wasn't working for you. You got to mix it up. You know, cross routes. You know, get the step on the on the receiver. Put the we we'll use Patrick's big body to get the the re- defender behind him. You know, or, or have Judy on a slant route. You saw yeah. it when he caught that slant route in the second half. Yes, he's money on that. Yes, I know, I know, and I couldn't understand why are you going back to, and that's the thing with Shermer too. I'm not liking is that he didn't learn his lesson in Pittsburgh. He kept the blocking scheme the same, and, and and it's just like, why is it you can't learn? What is it? Why is it you can't learn from your mistakes? You have to keep getting hit over the head over and over again before you learn. You know that's just not that's. And you know they could find another coach to to coach a three receiver system. They don't have to have him if this guy doesn't work out. You don't have to to change the system. Just get somebody else. If you if you're going to get somebody else, get somebody else that can run it. But we got Elway. I wouldn't. I don't. I don't trust who he would bring in. I don't. I honestly don't trust Pat Shermer to come up with a game plan. I haven't seen one game where Pat Shermer's like, okay, yep, yeah, that's the st- that's his stamp on this game. I feel comfortable with him. That that was a really good game plan, Pat Shermer. I haven't seen that at all this year. Can can. Can Munchak run the three receiver offense? I'd have to go back when he was coaching. I know. I have to look at Munchak, what Munchak has done. As Well, was he ever an offensive coordinator at any time? He was a head coach. Probably not. I have, I, I, I have to look I, at I don't want to rely on Mike Munchak. I want him to do the one job is develop offensive line talent. I don't want to. He needs to stay as an offensive line coach. I, I don't want him going to be an offense coordinator. And, like, I, I get it. I want somebody in here who has a clue because you are not going to well, win. No, you're base. right. You're right. Because the offensive line desperately needs work. Exactly. And I, yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, want, I don't want to go. I, I'm tired of just continuing to get offense coordinators. I'm the not ca- the biggest. The carousel. Not, the coaching carousel. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't. I just want somebody who can work with Drew Locke who can do that, and I don't, I don't, I, I just want somebody who can, who can, who can relate to Drew Locke's uh, 
tool, his uh, skill set. I just want somebody who can relate to it because Drew Lock has the talent. He has he has the ability. I'm not trying to be a Drew Lock homer here. I've seen it. I've seen it. But I don't want to be like, okay, Pat Shermer. I don't. I I have to give Pat Shermer a full year. I have to give him at least one or two years before I'm comfortable saying, okay, we need to get rid of this guy. I'm well, not. Here here's the deal. You, we brought it up is that Elway he can't. He's going to have to stick with luck. He can't try to he experiment. To. He can't experiment with other quarterbacks. He's got to keep a system not. in place. He probably can't afford to get rid of Shermer either because he has to keep a system in place long enough for something to work. Do you think that Pat Shermer hire was a Vic Fangio hire or John Elway hire? I think it could have been a Fangio hire because Fangio, there was a lot of... Now, again, I'm relying on the sports talk radios BS, but they had said mentioned, or they were, had mentioned um, Fangio talking a lot about working with Shermer and, and uh, being high on Shermer, that this was a Fangio, Fangio talking uh, Elway into uh, Shermer. Okay. So if that's the case, you need to ride with Shermer until Vic Fangio has gone out the door. Well, it'd be Fangio, Elway. They're all going to have to be out the door because that contract's up in two years. So, the be- I mean, the best thing for the best thing, cause I'm sure Elway's not going to be here, even if it this thing succeeds. I can't imagine Elway um, signing up for another. I don't want him to. And I, well, I don't even think he'll have a choice because I think by that time that we talked about it, the, the Bolins have to agree on a predecessor to, to Pat Bolin. Yep. Okay, an heir has to take over. They're never going to agree to that. The team will be sold. Now I'm going to segue. This is a, just a really quick thing. Remember I was said I had a, a scenario for you. This is, a, this is a Halloween nightmare before Christmas, or the nightmare before Halloween kind of scenario for Bronco fans. Oh, so five owners to start an international conference because they want to, you know, Canada, Mexico, and London. Oh, okay, no. so five owners, Broncos are sold and moved to Canada to, to help form this. The Denver Broncos are, are, so one owner buys the Denver Broncos, moves them to Canada. Montreal has a stadium. They're talking about either two teams in Canada or floating, but they'd have to have two teams to, to have a conference. So move the Broncos to Canada. The old uh, this Denver Bronco team. This would be Locke and all of them going up to Canada. The second owner, go, second Canadian owner, buys another franchise. Mexico buys has a franchise for Mexico City. London has a a franchise that's for the new Denver Broncos, like Cleveland, because they don't want to lose the market. A new Denver Broncos uh, owner is in Denver to keep the AFC West intact. So you start an international con use the Broncos to start an international con- uh, conference, the new international conference. And you have a new Denver Broncos similar to Cleveland situation in Cleveland where you have a, a new, that's just, that's just my nightmare for the Bronco fans to ponder on. I, I, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think that would ever happen because I think Jacksonville is going to be the next one to move. Why don't move L.A. Chargers? Like, you have all these other – you have the L.A. Chargers. Well, you know, you you could do both. You could move Jacksonville and Denver to Canada. That gives them two teams. You get uh, a team in Mexico City and a team in London, and then a new team again. And they really want that international conference. They just don't know how to do it. They Canada has the stadiums. Mexico City has the stadium. London has a state. They all have the stadiums to do it. But that's what I'm God, saying. This would be a golden opportunity for something like that to happen, the sale of the team to make a move internationally. That would just that would just piss me off. Well, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That would just really <laughs> piss me off. <laughs> that's the nightmare before Halloween scenario. Oh, I'm my at. gosh. <laughs> I had to put it out there because I could just see something goofy happening. True. You know, Roger Goodell is kind of goofy, so, but, 
I don't know. Wants this? And I'm telling you, they're not exactly. That's why they've been experimenting with it the past couple years. So, yeah, see if it works. But I, I don't know. I just like I said before. I like when I watched this game today. Like I told myself, I'm like, yeah, you can clearly see the difference between John Elway players and Vic Fangio players. I'm not going to continue to harsh on this subject, but I'm just, I'm so sick and tired of. Oh well, Melvin Gordon is a better catcher. Melvin Gordon's a better runner. Old breed, and it's just, <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's just we are not going to blame Pat Shermer for calling an aggressive game plan in the fourth quarter. He didn't do anything wrong. He was right. He was totally right. Is that what they said? Yes. Well, if they're saying that, they already know they're wrong. They already know they're wrong. Old if that's breed. what they're saying, like, come on, like seriously. Would Andy Reid in his right mind, if he had a game like that, would he really, really, really did what Pat Shermer did? Come on, people. Ask yourself that. Like, seriously. It would never happen because they have Patrick Mahomes and that great offense. But I'm just saying, like, come on. Like, this is what I'm talking about. And I told people this. You're not you're not going to win. You're not going to kick six field goals next week and expect to beat the Chiefs. It's, <laughs> you got to score more. you got to score at least four or five touchdowns in this game. You have to do what the Raiders did. But we don't have the offensive line to do that. So, so well, lock, you know, lock definitely need it. There's no point in talking about getting new quarterbacks or no. getting new coaches, even if we don't mean you don't like Shermer. No. We can't even talk about that because you got two, 2022 is coming up. That's what everything hinges around. Yep. So, They've got to make the most of what they got these next two years. They'll probably make if they're lucky. They'll probably make the playoff as a wild card this least. year or next huh? year. Next year or this year? Probably next year. Next year, if everything goes right. Yeah, I, that's the best scenario you can hope for with a team like this. They're not going to turn it around overnight. I think as the team sell, as they sell the team, and I believe they're going to do this, as, it's the, as they sell the team, they're going to have enough talent on this football team to make a run eventually. But it's going to have to come at the expense of who's going to be the owner, who's going to be the GM, and who's going to be the next coach of this team. Because I don't believe Fick Vangio is going to stick around on this team for after 2022. I don't see it happening. That's why he has a contract running through 2022. So everything revolves around 2022. Exactly. But I see you could see the glimpse, the glimpses of this, of this young offense to a point you've seen it since the very start of the season. But like we've said before, and like Peyton Manning, I'm always going to revert back to what Peyton Manning said. You, this team needs reps. That's what you've been saying for a very long time. Oh, So he's, he's agreed with us. Exactly. He come on. You think Peyton Manning's agreeing with sports talk radio? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so you say he's agreeing with us? <laughs> I mean, come on. Sir, I'm gonna ask a lot of Bronco fans out there. You really think that John Elway is gonna stay with this thing through 2022? You must be out of your mind because it ain't gonna happen. It would have to be this miraculous turnaround and his big ego. Oh, of course, I'll stay. It was all me. Yeah. Yeah, it, it became successful despite you. <laughs> you know it, exactly. Like, 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 like I've said before. I think as 2020 hit, 2022 hits, you've explained it, and I've explained it to Broncos country. That is going to be the turning point of whether or not this team is going to ascend or this team is going to descend, like they have been in the past since Pablo. If they're going to continue to be that bottom crowd of New York Jet, Washington Redskins. They have to get this thing right in 2022 for for the expectation of this team to be back at the national stage. You got you got to do your homework. You got to figure out your game plan. You can't go with on this blindfolded because if you're going to do that, you're going to be taking you're going to be taking advantage. Like this team has been taking advantage by the trust. You can't do that. Well, I got I got to still go back to this this idea sports talk radio was talking about getting getting throwing throwing into into crowds is the right thing. No. You know, the the run game was working fine, you know. You don't don't you, the only thing you had to do was score a touchdown. You yep. didn't have to worry about the clock. The clock 
The clock meant nothing. And, and, you know, the more time you take off the clock, not trying to, you know, get cute, trying to get, you know, pass happy. Be smart. If Yeah, just be smart with the football. Score your touchdown. You end the game. What part of that does these idiots at Sports Talk Rio don't, don't understand? Because they're so enamored by what they, what, they, what they have seen. They're so enamored by it. They're so, like, like we've, we've, we have constantly said, what John Owe likes to do. Oh, I see the Chiefs. I see the Seahawks. That's how sports talk radio works. They're so enamored by the Chiefs, the Bills, the, Ra- the Rams, the Ravens, all these teams that put up 30, 40 points a game. They're so enamored by that. Why can't we be our own? Why can't we be our own? And if, like, how can't I just, I don't get it. Why do we need to copy other teams? You don't need to be the best team in football. You just need to be a smart, sound team from the ground up. You like the Titans. You like the Titans. Yeah. You remember, you know, remember, remember this. <clears throat> remember when all these Bronco fans were talking about getting quarterback Sam Darnold? And well, what about Tannehill? Oh, oh Tannehill. <laughs> oh, that guy. <laughs> yeah, I love he's looking pretty good, <laughs> especially in the red zone. You know, you know what I'm saying? You just need He's a guy. very accurate. It, it, yes, there's a lot to be said about accuracy. And you know? Locke needs to work on that. Needs to work on it. He needs reps. Needs better decisions. Exactly. Decision. Thank the you. The coaches need to be, do better play calling. Exactly. Smart play calling. Oh, well, the coach didn't make that throw. The coach called the play, buddy. Yeah. The coach called the play, Sports Talk Radio. What? Okay. Do, oh, my God. You really think that Drew Locke called that play? I've been hearing that on Twitter. Oh, oh, Drew Locke made that. Drew Locke called that play. He wanted to be too cute with the football. You're not going to blame Pat Shermer, the guy calling the plays, who was brought over for a reason, huh? You're not going to call him. Well, I'm, agreed, I'm, both, agreed, I'm, agreed. I'm blaming both. I'm blaming both Drew Locke at the end and, and, and Shermer for that. Shermer should have, have, have even if, Put a put a uh, a throttle on lock and said, "Look, you got to do whatever you do. Just don't throw this this away. All we have to do is make sure that we score a touchdown. Whatever it takes. Hit a guy that's open. Let's not throw this away. Let's run this football down their throats. Make the smart throws. Make the smart throws. If you're gonna, I agree with you. If you're gonna do a play like that, why don't you do like a hook route or something?" Yeah. Instead of sending a guy deep on a slant on a post route, why yes. don't you do slants? If you're gonna if you're gonna be that cute, do short passes, stay in bounds. Yes, yes. Don't yes. do that crap. Yes, yeah. They were they were they were uh, they were definitely uh, taking away the vertical game. They did it against Kansas City. They did. Yes. So yeah, they weren't gonna. Yes. It, the, you know what? Also, I thought is that Shermer could get more creative too. Down the road, he needs to get. Uh, what's his face? Um, Belichick got a little bit creative. I'm not saying get cute, but get a little creative too. And I mean subtle things, like you said, something as subtle as a hook route. That's yes. what I mean by getting creative. Or, or do a do a dump pass to Lindsay. Yeah, something like screen. a little running back screen or something. Yes, a like, screen. You remember when we had when remember during the Peyton Manning era, we did those quick screens to DT. Why don't we do that anymore? Well, I don't think yeah, because they they haven't been able to block it. They tried it, I think, in the beginning and it didn't it didn't work out. Nobody could block. So they I would they gotta, still try. Yeah, yeah. They should yeah, that it, it um yeah, the play calling it just went, went went exactly the way we said not to let it happen. It like like come on. It, okay, if we were up, if we were, okay, if this was against Kansas City today, they would have came back and won this game. But the Patriots don't have a pat. They don't have, their offensive line is just, just dismantled I'll, by injuries. I'll, I'll tell you what, for as dismantled as that offensive line is, it ain't bad. I, I No, it's awe. not. I'm in awe as how good it could be, you, you know, as damaged as it is. It's, uh, it's a sight to behold. I mean... They're on their, you know, and we have injuries too, but that, that doesn't really mean anything. And our, our, you know, injuries yeah, actually. Those players haven't done, they haven't contributed. I, besides like Von Miller, Cortland Sutton, like the, like the top I'm talking two. about the offensive line injuries, uh, uh, you know, with uh, our uh, left tackle there. 
Uh, oh, not left tackle, right tackle. Yeah, Elijah Wilkinson. Yeah, Elijah Wilkinson. Like, you know, that was the best thing. Him going out was the best thing. Exactly. Demar Dotson is. This is exactly. I, I told everybody this. You should have started him week one. I this one. Like I'm telling you right now, Demar Dotson. He he. I'm I'm. I can live with Demar Dotson at right tackle because I don't have to worry about him. Yeah. Don't worry. And Bradley Chubb was a revelation today. Thank you, Bradley Chubb. I I. Uh, I think he's starting to get his legs under him finally. I you that that I think you're it helps. He's slowly but surely. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of uh, Von Miller there haunting uh, Cam Newton. Yes. And, and what did I tell you about uh, what to do against Cam Newton? What did I tell everybody what to do? Go they after. They were doing it. They were doing it. They were doing it. Not like they did in 2016 when they last faced him. But yeah. they were every time he would run the football, you saw Kareem Jackson. Bang, bang, like hitting him. Hitting yeah. him, hitting him, hitting him. That's what yeah. you have to do against Cam. You got to yeah. hit him. How did you like the, that one announcer? That guy was a homer all the way, wasn't he? A New Green. England homer? Green. One of those, one of those, you heard the, did you hear the announcers? Yeah, I heard the, are you talking about the Kansas City quarterback or the other guy, uh, Kevin Harlan? Kevin Harlan, is that him? Yeah, one of them was really like, you know, that they're just shoving, they're just shoving, he kept saying, that was great. The Patriots could do this. They could win this game. The Patriots, this, the Patriots. Like, was, man, was, dude, you're a homer. It was it was Green, the former Chiefs. He hates the Broncos. Every time he calls the Broncos, he hates them. <laughs> so it, it's like I said before, like we both said, like, like I'll let you talk about the bigger picture. But what I saw for the bigger picture is this is a Vic Fangio win. People can't take this away from him, but Sports Talk Radio will. Because yeah. they're that they're that put they're that wrapped up in their own head. Yes. But you like I said before, and I'm in a bigger picture. Vic Fangio and Elway player, Vic Fangio players, Elway players. You saw the difference in this game. Yeah, that's how I'll title this this video too. And you're on your honor. It's true. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, like like we said, like seriously, Melvin Gore. Like I'm so sick of bringing in these free agents that no. There's a reason why L.A. and the Chargers didn't want him back, because he's a nuthead. There's probably many reasons, yes. Because they were willing to say, sit on the bench, that's okay. We, we, we're not going to skip a beat without you. And that, uh, obviously... Skip a beat without Phil Lindsay, that's what happened. Yes, yes. Now that Lindsay's back, I'm sure Sports Talk Radio doesn't want to eat crow on that one, do they? No, they, they won't. They won't even talk they about it. Oh, they, they'll, they'll be like, we were with Phil Lindsay all the way. <laughs> oh, great. Away, yeah. Uh, yeah, is that the part where you said that we were getting sick and tired of him crying all the time? Yeah, you know? right. oh, Phil Blunt, you can't catch the football? Mm, okay. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, his turf toe was still an issue in this game. Yeah, okay. He probably okay. Well, complained last week. If it week. was, then I can't wait till it's not, because then he'll be the best running back in the entire league. Dude, Phil Blunt is that type of player. He is. He's a dog. Yeah, so well, he's got to get rid of him somehow. <laughs> I can't have that. Oh yeah, I, I, oh, God, just like he wants to get rid of Miller, just like everybody. Oh, uh, he he didn't talk to Sports Talk Radio. Uh, uh, we gotta get rid of him. Bradley Chubb, the next Von Miller. Oh my God. Yeah, it's gonna be yeah. Well, I, it's gonna be interesting that how to see how that Elway uh, Von Miller uh, relationship is doing. I think it's already, I think it's already broken. I, I mean, in my opinion, I think it's already broken. I, even when they were having that contract talks, Ellie was being such an asshole. I, I think, I think from that point on, he saw the money. You just, he's like, oh, that's a lot of money for a guy at my position. A guy at my position. That guy at my position. So I'm just gonna take advantage of it. So at the end of the day, I think Von Miller just said, hey, they're giving me that much money. Oh yeah. I mean, that guy's it's, making so much money. I think, I think you know, you're looking at a microcosm. I think that in 2022, after Elway's gone, and if if the Broncos can get a really good owner and GM, that's a big if, people will actually see a huge difference in this the new Denver Broncos minus Elway. Thank and you. it'll be a difference for the better. Yeah, because player personnel won't be trash. Well, he's not gonna. He won't end up pissing off. You know, players. it's one, it's one thing when you you are the like the New England Patriots and you can go through players, 
because we just keep winning regardless. And there's kind of a feeling among players that, yeah, I got to go somewhere else to make a living, but I respect what they're doing there, you know. But nobody, I think, respects Elway because Elway thinks that he has a New England Patriot-type organization. No, he doesn't. He has. Pat Bowen did, but he doesn't. He doesn't have that organization. He has animosity just oozing out of this organization among players. Yep. Except for Bowles. You know, Bowles. Uh, The guy in the hot tub, the offensive Juan James. Yeah, Juwan James, even though he hates, you know, to be asked to play and how dare you. I'm sure he'll have something nice to say. I'll give you a, something nice to say. But, <laughs> you know, the Vaughn Millers of the world, Chris Harrison's of the world, Lynn Phillips Lindsay's of the world. <laughs> yeah. Demarius Thomas. Yeah, of the world, you know, just, uh, yeah. So. Yep. That's all I got to say about this game. It was. It was a Vic Fangio player win. You saw the difference. Yeah, well, it was Vic, like I said in the very beginning, it was Vic Fangio's defense bailing out uh, Pat Shermer. Shermer's uh, offense. Yeah. Yep. All right, you want to wrap it up on that? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Take care, man. Yeah, see you later. Bye. All right.